Hi there, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will talk about chemical changes and the law of conservation of matter, also called the law of conservation of mass. Before we talk about chemical changes, we're going to talk about the different types of changes in matter. So there are three types that exist. You see them here, physical, chemical, and nuclear. A physical change is a reversible change. The properties of the substance do not change. So for example, if I take sugar and I dissolve it in water and I taste the water, it will taste sweet. So the sugar is still there. If I let the water evaporate, I could collect the solid sugar. So the properties of the substance have not changed. It could be that the grains are smaller so you don't see them because they're dissolved, but it's still sugar. In a chemical change, we are breaking bonds between the different substances and we are forming new substances. So because of this, the properties of those various um, substances will have to change. They're no longer the same as they were at the beginning because new bonds and new substances are formed. In this case, it is irreversible. So for example, if I burn a piece of paper, I can't take the ashes and turn them back into the original piece of paper. So that is not reversible. Then we have nuclear transformation. It says it, nuclear, it has to do with the nucleus. So it's particles inside the nucleus that change, they rearrange. And because of that, new elements will be formed because we know that the number of protons is very specific, as an example, to a certain type of atom. We can identify an atom by the number of protons that we will find inside its nucleus. So if we start uh, playing around with the content of the nucleus, well, obviously we will change the nature of the atom. And this is also irreversible. Now in this present lesson, we are interested in looking at chemical changes. So during a chemical reaction, we have reactants that react together. That's why they're called reactants and they produce products. That's why we call them products. So we start with certain substances and the bonds between the atoms get broken and then those single atoms get rearranged to form new substances. So because we have different substances, these will have different properties than the properties of the original substances. Now, during a chemical reaction, things don't happen instantly. So we start with a certain amount of reactants and those reactants collide together and through those collisions, they get transformed into the product. So as they're colliding and transforming, their amounts, so their concentrations, will decrease until there are no more reactants left in the container where the reaction is occurring. As the reactants are reacting, the products are being formed. So their concentration is going to increase until there are no more reactants left and the concentration of the products stabilize. So again, this happens over time. It could be a small amount of time. It could be a very rapid reaction. As an example, an explosion is an extremely rapid um, uh, reaction. Or it could be a very slow amount of time. Uh, something that's a little bit slower would be, for example, digestion. Now, how do we recognize a chemical reaction? There are specific signs that will tell us that a chemical reaction is occurring. And we only need one of these signs in order to determine that a reaction is chemical. The first one, the most obvious one, would be a color change. If I go back to my piece of paper that's burning, well, my piece of paper, for example, was white before and the ashes are very dark, probably black or dark gray. Color change, chemical reaction. It could be also that there is a production of light and or heat and or a gas and or a precipitate. So in the case of combustion, in the case of burning a piece of paper, you have the production of light, the production of heat and the production of a gas, carbon dioxide. Okay, production of a precipitate would be normally when you have two solutions mixed together and a solid gets created by um, the collision between the particles of each solution. When they collide together, a solid gets formed and it goes to the bottom of the container and that's what we call a precipitate. 
So again, you only need one of these, so one of these four or this one, so there's five in total, you only need to observe one of them in order to determine that a reaction is chemical. Now, when we look at a chemical reaction, there is what we, we call the law of conservation of mass, also called the law of conservation of matter. And it says the total mass of the reactants is always equal to the total mass of the products. Nothing is created, nothing is destroyed, everything is transformed. Okay, so the mass of all the components here, all the atoms put together on the reactant side, has to be equal to the mass of all the products because the atoms are not disappearing into thin air or they're just appearing you know by magic they're just being rearranged a little bit like when you take uh, Legos and you build uh, let's say a castle and then you undo your castle and you build a car and a house well let's pretend you use the same blocks the exact same blocks well the blocks looked a certain way at the beginning and they look a certain way afterwards, but it's exactly the same number of blocks. So because of that, the total mass on this side should be logically equal to the total mass on this side. And that is the case. And that's what the law of conservation of mass says. So if I have, for example, 16 grams of the first substance and 64 grams of the second substance, I know that the total amount of atoms, the mass of the total amount of atoms is 80 grams. At the end of the reaction, I should still have 80 grams of atoms because it's the same atoms that got redistributed to make new substances. Now, if I know that I have 36 grams of water, I can determine how much carbon dioxide maybe went into the room where this reaction occurred. I may not have captured the CO2, but I can still determine how much was produced. So if the total was 80, and I know that I collected 36 grams of water, automatically I can calculate that 44 grams of carbon, carbon dioxide sorry, had to be produced. So that is the law of conservation of mass or matter. The amount of particles on this side and therefore their total mass has to be equal to the number of particles on this side and therefore their total mass. You can see it here, 80 grams is equal to 80 grams. So that's the law of conservation of mass or matter. Nothing is created, nothing is destroyed, everything is transformed. And that's it for this lesson. I hope it was clear. If you have questions, you know what to do. Otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.